Well, we haven't seen delirium yet, but delirium is usually not caused by procholinergic drugs. It's much more often caused by anticholinergic drugs. And so we, we can see they're being tested now actually in Alzheimer's psychosis, and those people who might be more um, you know, vulnerable to that. If they are tried, we will may see that there, but hasn't been reported yet. Are there clinical trials that clients could be enrolled in? You know, there are, talk to the corona people, they're doing uh, an add-on study to uh, schizophrenic patients on D2 antagonists. They're doing a, a psychosis in Alzheimer's study. Uh, check with the corona booth. Will these new medications in development be LAI? I don't know, but perhaps not because there's two drugs in it. Um, it's too early to tell, but um, maybe it'd be a little complicated to do that. Do you foresee any future applications of the muscarinic modulators for dementia? Absolutely. Should work as, at least in the psychosis of dementia and very well may work in the agitation of dementia. As you know, uh, the Rexalti drug just got approved for agitation in dementia and the Alvalidy drug is about to be approved for that. So agitation is amenable to pharmacological input to, in Alzheimer's disease. This could work as well and it certainly should work for the psychosis. Will this work for bipolar patients? I don't know, but it could. I hope so. I think it's time to, to investigate. Totally plausible. For the muscarinic modulation of dopamine, do we assume that the cause of schizophrenia is due to malfunction of GABA neurons in the frontal cortex? There are two major hypotheses, actually many. There's actually a, a third. Uh, there's one hypothesis that the brain doesn't make enough M1 receptors and they're deficient in certain subpopulations. And there's a uh, group called the Dean uh, group, uh, Dr. Dean, has done uh, scans showing that, and there are some autopsy studies showing deficient cholinergic receptors. However, more popular is uh, the theory that there are sick GABA interneurons neurodevelopmentally. And finally, if you follow Danny Weinberger's work at Hopkins, he has reported, and it's been replicated, that there are both autopsy findings of deficient D2 receptors presynaptically in the VTA and also genetic studies that they're deficient. So it's possible that the autoreceptor for the dopamine, in other words, the break, as opposed to the accelerator, is gone. If the break is gone, dopamine comes out. So these are three of the major hypotheses of why this is wrong. But the fact that there is dopamine release is indisputable. The, why it is, we're still working on. A teen bought a benzo and took Benadryl. They hallucinated. Was this because the serum level of the benzo increased, increasing GABA? Uh, Glutamate stimulates NMDA and causing increase in dopamine. Well, Benadryl is really an anticholinergic, and so it probably did it through its anticholinergic effects, quite frankly. And a benzo is sedating, and the two together is, again, 1 plus 1 equals 10, also on the side effects side. So if you take that, he said, thrown in a little alcohol, it would have really made him fun. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're done.